Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're all going to learn about Elastic Compute Cloud or EC2. And so this will be a theoretical lecture. In the rest of this section of the course, it's extremely hands-on. We're gonna be going into the AWS console. We're gonna be provisioning EC2 instances. We're going to be SSHing into them and we're going to be turning them into little web servers. So you are going to learn an awful lot. But before we do that, we should learn what EC2 is. So what what is EC2? Well, basically, it's a web service that provides resizable compute capacity in the cloud, and it reduces the time that it takes to obtain and boot new server instances to minutes, allowing you to quickly scale capacity both up and down as your computing requirements change. Now, I was around for, I've been in tech for quite a while, and um, I remember a time before uh, AWS came along when if you placed an order for a, a you know a web server or a database server, they were actually physical servers. And certainly when I worked at Rackspace, that was definitely the case. And it would take anywhere from 10 days to do a deployment, sometimes up to 20 days. Um, and at other companies I work for, it would be six months before we could deploy those resources. And of course, when you were paying for these, you were paying for the servers up front. Now we could amortize the cost over a monthly basis, but you still had huge capital expenditure. And if you weren't using these web servers, you still had to pay. And then Amazon EC2 came along, you were able to provision virtual machines in the cloud at this like you know seriously the click of a button and it would be ready within a couple of minutes and it just changed the entire world so how is EC2 priced? Well, if you've done the Certified Cloud Practitioner course, you'll remember in it we had a pricing section and uh, we looked at a particular white paper called AWS Pricing Overview. Now, don't worry, you don't actually need to read this white paper for the Certified Solutions Architect Associate, but it does have a principle that basically applies across all of AWS. And the conclusion of the white paper says, while the number and types of services offered by AWS have increased dramatically, our philosophy on pricing has not changed. You pay as you go, you pay for what you use, you pay less as you use more, and you pay even less when you reserve capacity. So EC2 has a number of different pricing models. We've got on-demand, and this allows you to pay a fixed rate by the hour or even by the second with no long-term commitments. So you can literally just spin it up, have it running for a couple of hours, and then terminate the instance. And this is great for developers because you can go in, test an environment, see if it works, and then um, you know, go in and shut it down. Um, I couldn't imagine a world where that uh, was not possible. You know, just 20 years ago, you would have to go in and provision big physical servers. You'd have to have the money to do it. And it means all these little startups that are operating on a shoestring budget could not have taken their product to market. So, you know, AWS has changed the world by introducing on-demand pricing for virtual machines. We then have reserved, and this is basically provides you with a capacity reservation and it offers a significant discount on the hourly charge for an instance. And the contract terms are one year or three years. So this is where you're going to um, contract with AWS to either a one year or three year term. And the more you pay up front, the more you're going to save. So we then have spot instances, and this is basically where Amazon have excess capacity, so not everyone's using EC2 at once. And what they do is they drop the prices of their EC2 instances to try and get people to use that capacity. However, when um, you know other people are provisioning on demand or other EC2 instances uh, and they run out of capacity, they will want that capacity back. So the price moves around with spot instances. It's exactly like the stock market. It goes up and down. And basically you set the price that you want to bid at. If it hits that price, you'll have your instances. If it goes above that price, then you're going to lose your instances within a couple of minutes. So it moves around a lot. And we'll look at the use cases for that in a couple of slides. We then have dedicated hosts. These are physical EC2 uh, servers that are dedicated to you. And this can help you reduce costs by allowing you to use your existing server-bound li software licenses. So if you've got some really strict licensing conditions with Oracle, for example, uh, you might want to be using dedicated hosts. Uh, again, we'll look at the use cases to that coming up. So we'll start with on-demand. And on-demand pricing is useful for users that want the low cost and flexibility of Amazon's EC2 without any upfront payment or long-term 
commitments. And it's also good for applications with short-term spiky or unpredictable workloads that cannot be interrupted and applications that are being developed or tested on for Amazon's EC2 for the first time. And we're basically going to be using on demand for the rest of this course. Um, so we're going to provision our EC2 instances and then when we're finished, we're going to go in and terminate them. Moving on to reserve pricing, this is useful for applications with steady state or predictable usage, applications that require a reserved capacity, and users are able to make upfront payments to reduce their total computing costs even further. And reserved pricing comes in uh, a number of different types. So we've got our standard reserved instances, and these offer up to 75% off on-demand instances. And the more you pay upfront and the longer the contract, the greater the discount. We've got convertible reserved instances, and we're going to come to this, but basically the way EC2 works is you have a virtual machine, but you have different types of virtual machines. So you'll have ones that are very high uh, RAM with RAM utilization, or you have ones that have very, very good CPUs, and you can pick and choose, and they're called instance types. Now, with standard reserved instances, you can't um, convert one reserved instance to another. So if you get a T2 and you want to go over to an R4 or something like that, you can't do that with standard. With convertible, you can. So it allows you to change between your different instance types. We then have scheduled reserved instances, and these are available to launch within the time windows that you reserve. So maybe you run a school or something like that, and when everyone comes in at 9 o'clock and logs in, you need to scale, um, you know, for two hours while you do the login. So you can actually schedule um, having reserved instances to a specific time window. So those are the three different types of reserve pricing. So spot pricing, like I said, this is Amazon selling off their excess capacity um, at a lower rate. Um, so it's useful for applications that have flexible start and end times. So if Amazon suddenly want that capacity back and you're not going to, willing to pay a certain um, price, uh, what will happen is those EC2 instances will be terminated. So it's useful for applications that are only uh, feasible at very, very low compute prices. And it's useful for users with urgent computing needs um, for large amounts of additional capacity. And then finally, we have our dedicated host pricing. And that's useful for um, regulatory requirements. So it might be that the government says that you cannot um, support multi-tenant virtualization. You have to use a dedicated host. It's also great for licensing, which does not support multi-tenant uh, virtualization or cloud deployment. So if you've got some really harsh uh, Oracle licensing, for example, you might want to use dedicated hosts. And you can also um, be purchased um, on demand. So you can actually pay for your dedicated host by the hour. And they can be purchased as a reservation as well for up to 70% of 70% uh, off of the on-demand price. So I mentioned before that we have all these different EC2 instances. So these are all the available instances today. Now, don't worry, you're never going to be tested on a particular type of instance, certainly not in the Certified Solutions Architect Associate exam. Where you will start getting this is at the professional level. Um, they'll give you a bunch of scenario questions and then they'll ask you um, what type of instance would best suit your needs. Okay, so let's run through these. We'll start with F1. So this is for field programmable gate arrays. And the use cases for this is things like genomic uh, research, financial analytics, real-time video processing, big data, etc. If you don't know what FPGA is, go ahead and look it up. It's really interesting stuff. If effectively, it allows the chips to be reprogrammed um, after being manufactured. So the re rewired in a sense, um, but it's completely beyond the scope of this course, uh, but it is interesting tech. Moving on to I, um, so we've got the I3s. These are high speed storage, uh, and these are used for things like NoSQL databases, data warehousing, etc. Then got G3s. These are graphics intensive, and these are used for things like video encoding, 3D application streaming, etc. We've got H1s. These are high disk throughputs, um, useful for things like MapReduce based workloads, distributed file systems such as HDFS and MapRFS. We then have T3s. These these are our lowest cost general purpose uh, you know, instances, and uh, we're going to be using the T3s throughout the rest of this course. Um, and typically, the use case for that is web servers, small databases, etc. We've got D2s. These are dense storage. Um, these are used for file servers, data warehousing, and Hadoop. We've got R5. Um, these are memory optimized, and these are useful for memory intensive apps or databases. We then have M5. This is for general purpose uh, use, and typically you use this for application servers. 
C5, these are compute optimized and these are gonna be useful for CPU intensive applications and databases. Got our P3s, these are graphics or general purpose GPUs. These are good for things like machine learning or Bitcoin mining, etc. Then got our X1, these are memory optimized and these are useful for things like SAP HANA, Apache Spark, etc. We then have our Z1D, these are high compute capacity and high memory footprint and they're ideal for electronic design automation, so EDAs and certain uh, relational database workloads with high per core licensing costs. We then have our A1s, these are ARM based workloads and this is useful for scale out workloads for things like web servers, Arms is, ARM is just basically a cheaper type of pro, uh, you know, CPU, um, so it's useful for ARM based workloads. We then have our U6 TB1, and these are used for bare metals. So don't worry, you don't need to understand um, what each instance is and does for the Certified Solutions Architect Associate Exam. When you do go on to do DevOps Pro or SA Pro, you will have to understand this a little bit better. It is good to learn it now though, uh, and to help you learn it, I've just made a mnemonic. Um, so th th there's been so many mnemonics over the years, but this year for the 2019 mnemonic, we've got F for FPGA, I for IOPS, G for graphics, H for high disk throughput, T for general purpose, so think of a T2 or T3 micro, D for density, R for RAM, M for, which is the main choice for your general purpose apps, C for compute, P for graphics, so think PICS, X for extreme memory, Z for extreme memory and CPU, ARM, uh, A for ARM-based workloads, and U for bare metal. So how are you going to remember that? Well, it's fight Dr. McPixie AU. So here is Dr. McPixie. Uh, you can tell that she's a doctor because she's got a stethoscope. Uh, she's uh, from Scotland because she's wearing the tartan, uh, you know, sort of clothes. So that's Mc. Uh, she's a pixie, so you can clearly see the pixie with the wings. And then I did AU. So AU could either be Austin or it could be Australia. It's whatever you want to use to remember AU. Uh, our offices are in both Austin, uh, Texas, as well as in Melbourne, Australia. Um, so maybe that's the way you remember it, the A Cloud Guru offices. So you're going to go fight this Dr. McPixie in Australia or in Austin. So that's how you can remember all the different instance types. Like I said, um, it's not really important for the Certified Solutions Architect Associate exam. It is important when you go on and do the professionals. And I will just say one thing, these numbers here will change throughout the year. Again, you don't need to remember the numbers or anything like that. So an F1 might become an F2 or an R5 might become an R6. Uh, but it doesn't matter. The, the numbers are basically just the generation. So this is the fifth generation of the memory optimized instance. So on to my exam tips. So the first one is just remember what EC2 is. It's virtual machines in the cloud. It's a web service that provides resizable compute capacity. And Amazon EC2 reduces the time required to obtain and boot new service servers instances to minutes uh, from previously from days or even months, depending on where you worked, allowing you to quickly scale capacity both up and down as your computing requirements change. So remember what EC2 is, and we're going to spin up a EC2 instance in the very next lecture. Remember the different pricing types. So we've got on demand, we've got reserved, we've got spot, and we've got dedicated host. On demand is where you pay an hourly or by second rate. Reserved is basically where you sign a one or three year contract and the more you pay up front, the better uh, discount you get. Spot moves around like the stock market and really just depends on Amazon's own supply and demand. Uh, and then we've got dedicated hosts, and this is where you get a dedicated physical machine to you. And you can also, again, pay uh, pay for that on demand as well. And then just remember that if you've got a spot instance and it's being terminated by EC2, you're not going to be charged for a partial hour of usage. However, if you go in and terminate that instance yourself, you will be charged for an hour, for the hour in which the instance ran. That can be a popular exam question. And like I said, you don't really need to know all the instance types for the Solutions Architect Associate. It can be helpful later on when you go and do the pro. Um, but the way I remember them is just fight Dr. McPixie in Australia or in Austin. So there's Dr. McPixie. We're going to go and fight her in Australia or Austin. It's silly, I know, but it really, really does help you remember all the different instance types. So that is it for this lecture, everyone. In the next lecture, we're going to go in, get our hands dirty and provision our first EC2 instance. So if you've got the time, please join me in the next lecture. Thank you.